So in the last few videos, I got um, some awesome feedback. You guys give me awesome feedback, um, which is exactly what I was asking for. People seem to really enjoy the more in-depth stuff, breaking down um, why I was doing what I was doing. And so I thought, hey, you know what? I'm not going back to Raven for a while, or at least I don't think I am. Maybe go back next year, but it doesn't matter. Um, fish move around a lot. And I thought, hey, it'd be cool to show people exactly which points I was fishing, um, kind of areas of lake I was fishing, and better yet, why I was fishing there because that's the type of stuff you can apply on your home lake to become a better fisherman and if you happen to be around Rayburn you can even do it there um, hopefully this will help you out on your home lake I hope you enjoy it here it is okay so just a quick rundown of where we are on uh, Sam Rayburn and, and this is just I'm really doing this just as a you know you can you can use this um, almost anywhere in the country water starts getting in the 50s um, it's probably gonna work so here's a quick uh, zoomed out of Sam Rayburn, Gus Boykin. This is where a lot of people did well. Your top 10 guys, a lot of these guys were more up in this. And in historically, this is a better area of the lake. Um, I just didn't fish up there. So we went out right here by the dam down at Umford Pavilion. Um, I did fish some up here in Veach. Um, I actually caught three the last day over there. But um, majority of my tournament right here, I think they call this area like Farmers or something. I'm um, sorry, I'm terrible with the, the name. I did fish up some in Buck Bay. This is a really good spot to fish if you guys are going to Rayburn. Um, I had a deep spot out here, but like I said, they didn't bite. Um, some guys did catch them back here in the back, um, which is just, I mean, that's a community hole. Uh, a lot of guys catch them back there. So just want to give you all a rundown. Um, this right here, the, this was the area that I spent a lot of time. Um, just because it has a lot of, of points, main lake points, secondary points. Um, and so here's kind of the reason. I chose, if you watch the other video, the practice video and the, um, oh, Lord, the, the actual tournament video, you heard me talking about shad. There wasn't any shad. Well, the wind can play a huge factor in that. It blows them in an area, out of an area, um, and the wind had been coming in here, at least in that. I don't know if the hills, I don't know why, if it was swirling or what, but it, we had an east wind, northeast, southeast, um, and so it was pushing water. And we had a decent amount of bait in all of these. And so what I'm looking for, you see these right here. This is what when you hear guys talking about drains, um, it's these right here. This one you can see is, isn't as uh, of defined of drain. But this one, you see how those are more defined. And that's just the old creek bed. Think of these guys as a bass highway. And so along that bass highway, just like us, we're looking for just stopping points. So you look along here, stopping points. What is something different along these bass highways? Well, there's one. There's one there's one there's one you're just looking for somewhere and somewhere that you know the fish will stop and you can hopefully intersect one um let me see we'll go over here okay so this is just a more zoomed in view um and this is actually one of the points i caught a couple of keepers off of of this and i just want to show you all kind of what i was doing and and how a lot of us um were approaching this sorry about that guys it's my phone going off um so you come in um, and mostly secondary points I, I would start here position my boat here and what you would have is right here close to the point you would have bushes obviously because it's 10 foot high but just outside of that you would have hay grass and then just outside of that out there in more that like 12 foot area you would have clay and then just outside out here in the deeper stuff um, everybody knows Rayburn is famous for hydrilla so my super artistic um rendering over here i was trying to just give you an idea really so you'd have hay grass it'd come up a few feet and you have hydrilla out in the deeper stuff 15 foot of water and you would have a a five foot width i guess um and that's where a lot of the fish were sitting it would be right there in that kind of open that void and you heard a lot of guys on flw live talking about that and so kind of the program would be we'd start here start working down the bank dt6 10 and 14 was uh generally what we were using or what i was i was using um, and you just work around the point. And once you got up to the point, you'd just be kind of plugging, plugging away and dissecting that best you could. You know, you'd throw your DT6 up here shallow um, around the tops of this hay grass because a lot of this stuff was topping out at uh, three or four foot. And then you come on around the DT10. That's where it came in strong along the uh, clean bottom stuff. And of course, this hydrilla was growing all the way out here. You would have it, you know, almost all the way to the creek channel, all the way out in 20, 25 foot of water in some places. So you come around 6, 10 in the bare area, and this tall hydrilla, you would work with a DT14. Now, a lot of times, like I said, talking about the Bass Highway and stopping points, when you see them here, here, you know, places they're going to stop, the fish, a lot of times when they stop, they seem to like this stuff. So once I get around there, 
Um, you always want to, you know, hit that with a jig or something. It's just a really good spot to run into a big one. Now, it seemed, you know, obviously when they're coming off in the main lake, generally this time of year, what you'll see is you're going to get, you know, more bites on the main lake and then they'll start coming back to the secondaries and then back and back and back. Um, one thing I noticed is you didn't get many bites back here on this stuff quite yet. If you did, they just seem to be more like two pounders. Most everything was in the upper uh, thirds. Um, sorry about that. Would be in the, uh, the first thirds of the creek, you know, these main lake points, these secondaries and whatnot. So, and that's a pattern, like I said, that will work all over the country. Um, just fishing points, whether it's with a crankbait, um, jig, whatever you want to do. Uh, focus on that. Look at these drains. Think of it as a bass highway um, and be sure to work all the way around it. Several times I would work the entire point and not get bit until I got on the other side of it, whether it be because of wind current or whatever. Um, I get on the other side and catch them bringing the bait back across. So really important when it's a little colder out there um, to fish those really good, those stopping points. Fish them slow, fish them thorough, um, and, and that's a dynamite way to go get you a few bites this time of year. Really appreciate you guys watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'm going to do more stuff like this throughout the year just to kind of give an idea, uh, guys, ideas of, you know, maybe something different to go out and get a few bites. Uh, if you do enjoy it, let me know. If you don't, let me know that too. Um, appreciate you guys' time. Please subscribe, like this video. And if you really, really like it, always appreciate a share out across all the social media. You guys have a great uh, weekend. I'll see you next week.